My name is Sarah. My name is John. My name is Aidan. My name is Kira. My name is Jennifer Loftus. My name is David Henderson. And um, my name is Jackie. My name is Brian Walsh. My name is Carla Roberts. And um, my name is Elaine O'Connor. Uh, my name is Mark. My name is Pat O'Connor. My name is Kira Murphy. My name is Kath. My name is Kira. I'm an IT specialist. I'm a civil engineer. I, I work in a bank. I'm a primary school teacher. I'm an event manager in Microsoft. I work in a company called Total Fundraising. I'm currently working in South Africa at a volunteering company. Um, I work as a pharmacist, but I'm also back in college studying medicine. Uh, I work in uh, EBS Building Society. Um, I'm currently studying medicine in UCC. I'm working as a business analyst in AIB. I'm a PE teacher in a primary school in Dublin. I'm sales manager for Sangaman Weber, a construction materials company. I'm from Dublin and I'm an artist. I first heard about Habitat about six years ago and I did two Habitat builds in Hungary. I saw the programme on the TV back last uh, October, November on RTE and I, I thought, it was, uh, thought it looked like a worthwhile project to get involved in. Through the radio. Uh, Brent did an interview with Ryan Turberty on the one he showed in the morning and I heard him uh, speaking on there about his personal life and also Habitat uh, for Humanity. We always wanted to come to Africa and this year my sister Elaine, um, who's also out here in our British Habitat for Humanity, looked it up on the internet to see how many charities um, went out to Africa and after looking them up she felt that this was the best one and most suited to us for our qualifications so far. My mum has been in the last four years um, in Romania in, and in Honduras and since my return from Canada I thought I would try and join a matcher. She's uh, suffered from secondary breast cancer um, two years ago and I thought it would be a good thing. If she can go and do it then there's no reason why I can't go and do it. It went above and beyond the, my expectations. Um, I've had so much fun here, it's unbelievable. So. But I suppose what you see on the TV at home um, portrays a life in Africa. But when you get out here, it is that to a degree and more. Um, but the, the parts of coming out here to build houses and seeing the families and seeing the smiles on the kids' ev faces every day just make it a super amazing experience. Great. It was, uh, it was a good bunch of people we were with. It was a very worthy cause. And, uh, you know, it definitely met my expectations. Uh, I suppose it was a... A little bit different from what I anticipated, but it was, it was all good. It did, it did, and exceeded them in lots of ways. Um, it's been challenging in lots of ways as well, but uh, no, it's been fantastic, great. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. I didn't know what to expect really, to be honest, when I came over initially. like um, I didn't do as much research as I probably should have done because I just didn't have time, um, but it's just been absolutely incredible, absolutely. I, I came with an open mind. Um, to experience what went on there, yeah, absolutely, and, and more. It's a brilliant place, I think, to uh, for to come and experience something like this. I don't think I knew what to expect coming out, and I think that's the best way to come out. Don't come out with expectations, and that way you'll just immerse yourself in everything. Getting used to the fact that you didn't have a shower or a toilet or running water, but you know, we quickly adjust to that. Like, and you know, it's all part of the experience. This is how the people in this community live, and you know, it was great to be part of that. Like, so getting out of bed for breakfast and porridge at half six every morning and being on site with Paddy Jones, um, taskmaster. But uh, it was tough, it was a tough week. Um, but hey, we can go home and relax. But this, this is their life, and we're here for a short time to help them. I suppose the equipment is a bit, um, what would you say, behind the times, but generally it's, it's what they do here. Um, and so we go with the flow. So it's the lack of electricity. It's quite tough when you're eating your meals, sitting on the ground and only have a candlelight or a torch beside you to eat your meals or to wash your hands or whatever. So I found that the most challenging part of the overall experience. Packing, trying to get everything into one suitcase. <laughs> Working with Paddy Johns, definitely. <laughs> Physically, I didn't expect um, it to be as hard, but um, everybody's been just, you know, thrown in and working really hard. So I think just the um, initial getting here and um, I suppose finding yourself, finding your feet. The toilets would be one. Um, 
but mainly just seeing how much they have to do, uh, how much the women take on, um, and yeah, it's it makes you feel lazy when you think that you can go out for a drink at night or on a Saturday night or whatever you want to do. So to deal with lots of different characters and people and how you can get on with each other. Um, I work for myself, so it's a, it tends to work maybe with two or three other people at the same time, but dealing with a load of different characters has been the most challenging and different aspect. I'd have to say that the toilet facilities. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, my squats are great. <laughs> But for me, because I haven't done a lot of travelling, it was, it was actually just getting here. It was was I've never done a long haul kind of flight, even though it mightn't be that long haul, but 10 hours and the bus journeys, that's that's probably the hardest. I'm just not used to it, but I'm sure more, more hardened travellers wouldn't find it too bad, you know? Waking up every morning and seeing little kids walking you to work, um, breaking your back, um, aching every day and the kids walking you home in the evening. I don't know, I thought that the mass really took me by surprise. It was so big and so welcoming and we really we got stuck in to just this you know, you're completely immersed in sort of the bosom of the whole community and I didn't expect the church was gonna be so big. I didn't expect singing, which just brought me to tears. It was just so just perfect. Getting a house finished for a family here and then the second one was to play in rugby with all the kids out in the schools. Interacting with the people and the kids especially are just so warm and welcoming. It's, it's just been amazing. You kind of feel like a celebrity walking around. Staying with the community, although it's hard, you really get a feel for the culture and how they live their lives and the hardships that they experience. The children in the community, they've been just absolutely amazing. They're so warm and so smiley and oh, they're just fantastic. The highlight, I think, is just the, the people that I've met, both volunteering and uh, the local people have been brilliant. Playing with the kids, seeing the kids' amazing smiles every day, um, and seeing the houses go up, and, and knowing that these kids are going to be living in the houses is just fantastic. There's so many different things you can do to volunteer. I mean, it's not necessarily just mucking around. You can help uh, people fundraise. Uh, I mean, that's the type of volunteering too. It's, it's the best fun. It makes you feel so much better. You get to really enjoy everything you do and it also gets you to um, realise how much you actually have. Uh, volunteering is something that I've wanted to do for a long time and between having children get married and changing careers, um, I haven't uh, done it and it's a fantastic thing and I think everybody should do it. I would recommend it to anyone who can spare um, a week out of their life that they have support at home that allows them to go away and do this, this great, great work. It's almost like when you're here, when you're in a different, very different type of environment to your usual environment, it's almost like it's hitting like a, a reset button almost. You, you know you're going to go home with a greater appreciation of all of the things that we have and I suppose the type of lives we lead. I think it's something everybody should do and um, I think the, it's such a rewarding and fulfilling experience. I think everybody should, I suppose, or would benefit from something like this. I think it's just time out from everybody's day-to-day -day stuff, so totally different. And I, I'd say everybody will go home and just kind of think, wow, I mean, it's a fantastic experience. It mightn't be for everyone if they're used to their creature comforts, but it might be good for people who are kind of used to their creature comforts to, to get rid of your phone and you don't have to worry about technology, that kind of thing. It's nice to Kind of, it's like back, back to basics, I think. I mean, this is only a week out of your holiday, seven days. I mean, you see these images every day on TV. Everybody knows there's, there's problems out there. There's really no excuse that you can't go out. It's very, very simple to raise money. You just get your friends in. You've got to send a few emails, send the text messages. Uh, and it just, it, you know, it perpetuates itself. And especially when you've got a great brand, something like Habitat, it's, it's an easy sell.